a Grammy winning producer whose beats I actually love just tweeted me and told me that my Black Friday beat sale is basically ruining his career and that I'm selfishly destroying the producer community because of my beat sales. He said because of me, he gets disrespected and can't charge industry standard prices i have to take the good with the bad at this point on the one hand i've had legends reach out people like mc light chuck d had these really amazing moments and then on the other hand i have a producer who, who has at least one beat that i used to absolutely obsess over essentially blaming me for his hardships and inability to do good business in the music industry so what happened it was black friday and i ran a beat deal i had a bunch of beats that i had just made that hadn't really gotten leased and i created a pack it was probably no definitely my cheapest beat pack ever it was 30 beats starting at 49 99 for the whole pack for a basic mp3 lease so am i destroying the producer community by running this type of deal once a year some producers would say yes and at least one producer said i'm destroying his business i'm not really gonna address that because it sounds to me like a wife blaming her unhappy marriage on strippers and i just figuratively called myself a stripper so let's move on am i selling out the producer community with my black friday deal am i selling myself out with that deal. Look, I'm unique. I have 2,500 beats in my catalog. I don't think many producers can say that. In fact, I would guess maybe only two others could say that on the entire BeatStars platform, maybe on all platforms. I wanted to compete in the online beat selling space. I had a chip on my shoulder because I was new. I was, a, I was late to the party. So that's what I did to stand out. I saw that Cash Money AP was making a beat a day and uploading a beat a day i was like you know what let me let me see if i can do two a day so this isn't something that the average producer can do the average producer might only have 30 beats in their entire catalog again i have 2500 i've sold beats to thousands of people beat leasing is affordable for unsigned artists i try to make the best beats for them and i try to set the price at a number that is reasonable for an unsigned artist budget not only can they afford to buy from me once they can afford to keep coming back for their subsequent projects a lot of producers look at selling a beat as a one-time transaction i don't look at it that way i collect data i offer deals i reach out to my email list weekly i'm active on social media i try to respond to dms you know unless it's something weird or like just an apple music link and when black friday comes around once a year mind you i run a sale one it's the holiday season people have very little money because they spend all this money on toys and this and that and travel and everything and they're exhausted so let me give them something of value to end the year i don't pay to advertise this deal i probably should but i don't and that basically means only my existing subscribers and past customers even know about the deal and guess what they appreciate it maybe the producer community doesn't but is another beat maker buying my beats no Okay, cool, then I don't give a fuck. Now, customer retention is essential. It, it's a major component of this beat selling course that I'm working on. Most beat selling courses I've seen focus on sales, right? Sales funnels, closing sales, DMing rappers for sales, the psychology of sales, selling, 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 all of that is important. But retention is a missing and necessary component to that. Retention leads to sustainability in the long term. So back to me devaluing my beats. I used to be the asshole that would go on social media and stick my nose up in the air and criticize beat makers on SoundClick for leasing beats for $24.99. I would actually discourage producers from doing that. Why? Because... I was afraid it was going to affect my income. I felt that way firstly because I had no experience in the online beat selling space. At the time, I was solely chasing industry placements. And to be frank, because of that, I was struggling financially. You know, I didn't have hit singles at the time. I had some placements. But say I had an amazing year. Say, say in a good year, I got five major label placements at $10,000 each, a $10,000 advance per placement, right? $50,000 gross. That's difficult to achieve. The vast majority of producers don't even get one major placement. I'm talking about getting five in a year. After the 20% management legal fee, which is, you know, 
liberal at this point. That's only $40,000 I'm taking. Then there are taxes. There are also business-related expenses. Not to mention the unfortunate reality that you almost always have to chase labels down just to get that advance paid. Sometimes that payment is delayed months. Sometimes it's delayed years. Now, a lot of producers are winning in the music industry by doing this. Some producers are, are just selling beats online. Some producers have a hybrid model. I feel like I have more of a hybrid model. There are producers who are getting placements left and right and they still have their beat stores and they're active in both arenas. Me, I have about, I don't know, 15, 16 revenue streams that I'm always collecting from. And look, as I record this video right now, there are people selling beats for a dollar and even lower sometimes. That used to worry me. I'm not worried about it anymore. They've been doing this for years. It hasn't hurt me. For the people who are still scared, let me share with you this. I've been selling beats online since about 2017. Since then, my sales have only grown. In fact, in that time, and actually pretty recently, I've gone platinum twice and gold three more times. So if people are saying I'm devaluing my brand, I'm just not seeing it. Everybody look, this is who's making all the damn noise in the background, look at this. Here's a comment I got on YouTube from a subscriber who is concerned that I'm devaluing my, my beats and screwing myself over. This sale is nowhere near over. Actually, it is over. Assuming that the discount is that you are waving Fuck these comments, man. Assuming that the discount is that you are waiving what the industry deems you're worth. Huh? Those 30 beats cost you more than $50 to make because I'm selling it, the, the whole package for $49.99. Electricity, rent, taxes on your studio space. I'm in Toronto, maybe it's different where you are. Do they only charge rent in Toronto? Did you get those samples online? Internet. <laughs> I don't know why that part's funny for me. <laughs> Have you ever gotten a drum kit online? Internet. You ever do online banking? Internet. <laughs> you ever heard of eBay? <laughs> Internet. <laughs> Divide those bills by the minute and calculate how much time your beats took in minutes. Other people would factor a lot more in, but let's lowball it. That's the end of the comment. It seems kind of incomplete. I appreciate the concern, but this is like telling a band, why are you selling your CD for $15? It, it cost you $2,000 to make that EP. Or if someone looked at me and said, why are you DJing a show for $500? Your equipment costs $2,500. Why would you do that? It, it doesn't make sense, respectfully. Internet. Again, thank you for being concerned about my finances. I've already covered my equipment costs. I'm not new. I've been doing this since I was a little child. I'm not selling beats for a dollar 67 each. I'm licensing the rights to commercially use them. And the recording artists appreciate it. If I sell this this beat deal a hundred times at roughly fifty dollars each, which is conservative given that there are upsells if you want the pro or the unlimited license, that's more than enough for me to cover all my bills for the next two months. Where's the loss? I make a little money, the customers gain valuable creative assets, and I gain additional customer loyalty. It's a flash sale, it's over in a flash. Matter of fact, the day after I deleted the deal from my website, beat sales were the same as ever, no drop. Let me just explain this as easily as I can. And I'm sorry if it sounds like I'm, I'm talking down to you. If it costs you $1,000 to produce a product, that doesn't mean that you have to sell that product for $1,000. How much does it cost to run a restaurant per month? Probably tens of thousands of dollars, depending on the size. That doesn't mean each meal costs $10,000. That just means the restaurant needs to figure out how to sell a lot of $25 entrees. That's called marketing. They want their customers to come back and purchase more $25 entrees. That's called retention. They might run sales, something as dramatic as a kids eat free on Tuesday kind of sale. That's a promotion. What, what planet am I on? Am I not understanding something basic here? Like, am I missing something? Because I'm getting a migraine trying to explain the obvious and this is not at all what I wanted to do with this video. So let's end on this. And this is my opinion. But as long as you're not compromising your integrity or your morals, and you're not hurting anybody, there are many valid ways to run your music production business. Your job is to figure out what that means to you. And I wish you lots of success on that journey. Appreciate you watching. Peace.